My name is Vela Idam Salvaraj. Uh, I have a small company in uh, Tamil Nadu. So basically, uh, my primary business is uh, e-commerce. However, I did my master's in cyber forensics in UK and I also worked there for quite a uh, time. And then later on, I worked for a few governments on security consultant projects and a uh, little more. Like I worked for most of the governments except for Indian government. So this is about me, a little brag. Do you, do you guys know what is echo? Yeah, it's like print screen. Okay, good. Okay. Is there any beginners over here? Okay, that's great. Okay. So, have you guys tried anything known as remote administration tools? Yes? Okay, alright. So, obviously, how many didn't succeed in it? When it comes to VAN, do you know what is VAN? What is VAN? Why did I do have you been able to hack someone in USA from India? No? Okay. Have you guys know the term known as port forwarding? Yes? But it didn't work, right? Okay. This is a basic thing which we need to know about port forwarding. Okay? India has dynamic IPs. Hello? Okay. India has dynamic IPs. And then another thing you need to look into is uh, ISP providers block the most of the ports. So that is the reason even if you port forward in your router, still the connection won't go through. There is a tool known as NGROK. N-G-R-O-K. If you want it, note it down. So you can Google like lots of tutorials. So automatically it will open a port for you guys. And later on, okay, for the dynamic IP thing, what you do is you use a DNS. Like no IP. Okay. So, I just like, uh, I, I, I want you guys to know the basics, so it will be easy further, when we go further, okay? Alright, okay, hacking with style, it is not like, okay, uh, for example, I'm creating a payload using a rat or something, and if I'm going to give it to my friend, will he install it? Will he at least think about clicking it? No, right? Obviously, no one likes to touch EHC, everyone knows, okay, obviously it's going to be a virus, and they are going to be skeptical about it. So, they, at that point of time, think about like this, like, what if you give them a Word document or a PowerPoint or an Excel document, okay? Obviously, that person is going to open it, right? Also, it is easy to elude antiviruses as well, okay? There are three things you need to know about. One is macros, and the another one is HTA, and the other one is DDE. So we'll be looking into all the three and we'll be having a demo on DDE, okay? So macros, what do you guys know about macros? What is macros? Sorry? Okay, it's a function in Microsoft Office, okay? What else? Okay guys, let, the, let us make this like a two-way interaction, okay? So the more I can teach you, the more you can learn. Alright, so macros is like, it's a function, what it does is, it will be doing all the repetitive tasks, once you record it, you can play it again. Is there any program over here, VB script, Visual Basics, VB script, anyone? No? Okay, good, okay. You can program a malicious script in VB script and then what you can do is, you can insert it in the macros. So what happens, once the person clicks on it, opens it, it is going to prompt him to enable the macros. So once he enables it, automatically the script activates itself, it downloads and executes. There are two functions like you can execute it or what you can do is you can ask the VB script, go to a particular server web address like www.example.com slash virus.exe. Please download that particular exe and execute it. Okay, so these are all antivirus evasion techniques. Also like you have payloads, Pay what is payloads guy? What is a payload? Sorry? Can someone like give them, give the guys a mic please? That would be great. What is a payload guys? Okay, what is an exploit? Which takes the advantage of vulnerability and enter into the vulnerable system. Exactly. 
So then comes the payload. Okay, the exploit which takes the advantage of the vulnerability, and then comes the payload, the last one. Whether it can be a backdoor or it can be a command shell, even the payload can be can be run in the memory. What is memory, guys? RAM. Okay. Uh, the good thing is, if you are able to run your payload in the memory, there is an advantage. AVs will never pick up. Hundred percent. AVs will never pick up. But once it writes to the disk, if you are going to try to do it on a persistence and you want to do all the registries, if you are going to make some changes on the registries, because I downloaded like 2 GB files, so tomorrow I am I'm going to come back and download another 2 GB of files, so obviously that time you will have to make it persistent. Okay, so at that point of time, AVs will pick it up. So, however, I am not going to talk about AV but still I am just giving you an idea how to do a decent Neat VAPT. Okay? So that is how we do. So there is a disadvantage where when it comes to like uh, memory payloads. What exactly is if the computer shuts down, that's it, we lose the connection. So again, you need to rerun the exploit, then send the payload. Okay. Uh, I'm not sure like it is visible over here. Like you can see, it's asking you guys to enable the content. And over here, it says, okay. Uh, they are using social engineering techniques over here, like saying, hey boss, the document which you are using, the Microsoft Office which you are using is outdated, so kindly click on enable content. So obviously if that person is going to click on, okay, he thinks, okay, I'm using Microsoft 2010, okay, probably this document was created by 2016, so what we do, we enable the content, right? Because you could have, have you guys come across your spam folders with RTF or docs, anyone? Yes? So, they, they would have requested you please uh, fill in your email address. So, no harm then which I am going to give like some random email address or something like that. That's what you think. But basically, there will be other things like HTA and other stuff. Uh, they are all like silent execution. But as of now, they are not silent. Uh, we will talk about it later. Okay? So, you, you should use your creative techniques over here. Okay? Uh, for example, like I use, I used to send it like, okay, this document is pro protected by McAfee, kindly enable content to view the file, okay? Or else what I do is I just put a base 64, do you guys know what is base 64 encoding and decoding? Yes. Okay? Okay. It's just like encoding, decoding technique using base 64. So what I do is I just uh, uh, type something random and I just uh, encode it uh, base 64 and I just put the junk files and what I do is I, I, I put a pop up over there. Uh, saying, hey boss, uh, fonts on this thing, you need to update fonts, kindly click on enable content. Or the uh, if the document is scrambled, you need to enable content to update the fonts. So what people think, okay, probably I'm missing some fonts, so obviously I should enable the content. Okay, is it only for Microsoft Word macros? Office in a sense, is it for Outlook? What about others? Anyone using Excel over here? No? Okay. Those are all like uh, Tata Pati Kala. What do you say? Like grandfather, grands, uh, grandmother stuffs. Yeah? So we don't like to use it. Okay. It's in Excel as well as PowerPoint. It's present in everywhere. So, okay. Uh, so that's all about macros. Okay. Macros was. Okay. Do you know Melissa virus? Yes? No? Okay. Exactly. So it was the second virus which spread through macros. The first one was invented by Microsoft itself. Uh, it was named something like package or something like that. They shifted by mistake. So the second one was Melissa. What happened was Melissa came into existence in 1990s. Uh, there was a RTF or doc file and once the victim uh, downloads it, automatically a script executes and what it does is it makes an it just attaches all the doc files and it uh, mails it back whomsoever is there in the victim's client list. So that is an example. Okay. Uh, is it visible for you guys from here? No. So you guys have to come friend a little bit. Is it possible? Can you move?
Okay. If you look over here, okay, you just have to click on tools. There is an option known as macros. Okay. So once you click on it, there will be an option known as record macros. So uh, what I'm going to do over here is like I have typed some random things over here. So after some time, I, I need those things to be copied in a new Excel document. So I don't want to like do a copy paste because there are documents which are in sizes like 700 MB or even I have seen files like for 3 GB Excel files. Okay. So those things are like repetitive tasks like it is going to take forever and forever. This took me like 15 seconds to type all the stuff so they are like A, B, C, D something I have typed it on uh, all the columns and rows. But it took me like 3 seconds if you can watch it. So I just like I am just typing it. Now I am just stopping the recording and then what I will, I will be doing is I will be opening a new document. So now I will be playing the macro which I have I had over here which is like conclave. Okay, it just took a second over there. Did you see it? It was like a copy paste. It just took a second. So over here if you if you see this place, I, what I did was I tried to edit that particular code. So this is the place where you need to put your BB script. Does anyone know what is Kali Linux? Yes, sir. Okay. Most of them know? Okay. For people who don't know, Kali Linux is an operating system which is built mainly for penetration testing purposes. Okay. Uh, there is a super tool known as Metasploit and MSF Venom. Okay. So MSF Venom is also inbuilt inside Metasploit. Metasploit is like a software, whatever you call it, a tool. Okay. It is a combination of. Okay. Can Metasploit do vulnerability scanning? Yes, yes. Metasploit can do vulnerability scanning as well. Okay, so Metasploit. Okay, so what you can do is you will be able to generate a BB script using Metasploit. So what you need to do is just copy paste it over here and just set the document to the intended person. All right. So this is what macros is. Okay, now comes HTA. What is HTA, guys? Anyone heard about it? What is HTA? Heard about a HTML application? Yeah? Is it related to STXS file? Sorry? Is it related to dot .stxs file? Dot .stxs file? No. Uh, it's like, uh, have you seen, like, have you tried to make a small clock or something, like a small wall clock uh, on your desktop somewhere? Yes, so those things all fall under HTML application. So technically it's just a HTML with some scripts inside it. So that's what like HTMA is. So once the victim opens it, automatically the HTA file will be downloaded from a server. And if, once it is executed, we will be able to compromise that computer. So I'm just like showing you guys like how to do, okay. Uh, so I'm just like showing you how to do it manually. This is just like, a, okay. Over here, when I click on over here, like from a file, there will be an option known as URL. So you just have to give the URL with the extension like example.com slash evil dot hta. We just click on it, okay, that's it, send, the, send it to the victim. So I'm, I'm teaching you guys to do it manually. There are tools, okay, which you can do it automatically, but I, I'm trying to teach you guys manually because the more manual, the more success. Okay, but still I'll be showing you the tools how to do it. Uh, okay, then comes DDE. Okay, almost like macros will be picked up by AVs and HTA, yes, it is also being picked up by AVs. But still there are scripts. Huh. But still there are scripts which uh, where you will be able to FUD. What is FUD guys? What is FUD? How about the term? FUD means fully undetectable. So that's what I like. Okay, you can use scripters and other stuffs for it or encoders to do those kind of stuffs. Okay, 
So, D, okay, have you guys uh, come across, is there any, anyone like uh, who have been selling uh, Amazon or eBay as a part time, anything like that? No one? Okay, Amazon and eBay, they don't sell their own products, instead they hire sellers and those sellers will be selling on that platform. So, they just act as a platform. So, what happens is, uh, whenever, okay, for example, let us consider an iPhone over here. Okay, so I see a seller, uh, like a pet seller, this is my competitor, okay, he has listed it for 10 rupees, where my price is at 11 rupees. So what I can do is, I can simply write a DDE script and I can ask it, whenever that person is going to change it, I want my Excel document to be updated. You can do it using DDE. So the same, so that is the main function of DDE, like dynamic data exchange, sends messages between applications, even you can, you could ask, okay, is there anyone like uh, into stock market? Stock market, guys. No one? Okay. Okay. Uh, in stock market, like uh, people, they will be giving you an application, like client side application. So what you do, once you launch that application, it will tell you what are all the prices going on, which one is low, which one is high. So using DD, they will be able to grab all the li lifetime information into an Excel sheet. So these are uh, real-time users, uh, like I said, like stock market updates, inventory management. Inventory management is something known as like how many products are there in your account, uh, like in the sense Amazon account. So that's what and creating compound documents. Like you can even, uh, for example, uh, you can link a document. Uh, you can link uh, Excel and a Word document. What you can do is whatever whatever the products which is getting sold over there. Uh, you can simply take a particular area without changing the source of the document. Okay. Okay, the tools required Kali Linux, Fat Rat, Microsoft Office, any version, Microsoft Windows. Basic knowledge about networking and port forwarding, which I just said in the earlier class. Do we have any issues with port forwarding, guys? Any doubts? So, excellent. Port forwarding, SSH port forwarding. Are you seeing that? No. Okay. You create a payload. Okay. You give it to someone who is sitting in some other country. Once he executes, it is going to try to establish a connection between your computer and his computer. It won't be able to do unless you port forward it. Okay. So port forwarding. If you have to do port forwarding, what you do? You just like open some ports in the router, but still it won't work because we are in India. So we'll be having dynamic uh, IPs, so we'll be using a DDNS, like noip.com, then, but noip is not recommended. We'll be using a noip.com for DDNS, and for ports, what we do, we'll be using ng-rock or anything like that. Or else, like, you need to call your ISP, say them, like, I want to play a, ga play a game in my Xbox or PS4, only then they will open it. But you can't say them, like, we are going to set up a rat or anything like that. Okay, understand the code. Is the code visible for you guys? Yes, no? Yes, okay, good. Okay, so what we do, okay, uh, I came across a lot of scripts uh, for making, okay, DDE can be done on Excel as well as Microsoft Word, okay? But I, I came across a lot of scripts for Microsoft Word, so I thought like, why not give it a try for Excel, okay? The, re the reason behind this, Word is like uh, something like, uh, everyone knows about Word uh, when it comes to the community, like no one trusts Word. But Excel, like I can tell my friend, hey bro, I just got some usernames and passwords on my website. Can you please check it out? So obviously he's going to open it. So I thought, okay. <sighs> so over here, what I say over here is, I'm telling the Excel document to open command prompt from here. And then I'm asking the command prompt to execute calcul calculator.exe which is in Windows 32 folder. Okay? The same way, the problem with DDE is I won't be directly able to open a PowerShell. Okay? So what I did, I asked the command prompt to do the PowerShell.exe, then I asked the PowerShell.exe to download a PS1 file. PS1, what is PS1 file, guys? PowerShell. Okay, good. 
How about PowerShell forensics? Because my expertise is in forensics. Oh, but I learned a lot. Okay. PowerShell is like a... It's a great tool. Like uh, you can even uh, call any DLL, ask to which process it is associated to it or which was the last process it used. So I'll be asking the PowerShell to download this particular uh, payload from here, which is cyberconclave.ph1. And then what, what I thought was, after some time, I could see like, uh, after like uh, 10 or 15 times, I was not able to use this particular command. What happened was, my Excel started to block it. So what I did, I wanted to make another one. So what I did, open, okay, once the person opens the Excel document, I wanted that Excel document to open another Excel document and then call the command.exe and then PowerShell, then goes the payload. Do we have any doubts? No, this will be directed by antivirus. Because it's because anti -power this, no? uh, It is not about the power shell. Because the payload over here is a raw payload. Okay. We haven't encoded it or done anything to it. So it's a raw payload. Obviously, it should pick it up. So what is it? Dot PS. Sorry? Dot PS extension. extension. It's power shell extension. Yeah, that particular yeah. file can be run in only power shell. And then what is it? XLBGNM.in. Sorry? XLBGNM.in. Okay, it's IEX component which is asking it to download string. Anything else? Okay, uh, this is like a small video, like uh, how you can make a DD Word document using uh, using Met Metasploit. Metasploit has a particular thing, like I just see. I did it long back, this is my video, so I just play it, see it like... Are you guys able to see it? Okay, what I did was, I just like, just a minute. Okay, this is Metasploit guys. Okay. So I just typed in MSF console, then Metasploit fired up. And later on, what I did was I I used the exploit use exploit Windows DDE underscore delivery. Then I set a server host. Server host is I I made my Kali computer to act as a web server. What is a web server? Then I just set a payload Windows. Okay, what is a payload, guys? Like what exactly? Is a, that's a payload handler. What is a payload handler? Yeah, it's a component in Metasploit framework which is used to do all the functions uh, even after post exploitation. <coughs> so that's what a handler is. So then, uh, then I set uh, set my L, L host. What is L host? Local host. Okay, local host is me, the attacker. So I set my car, my IP address over there. And then I gave my uh, port to be 6708, which will be a random port. Then I just clicked on exploit. And what they did was, it started to give me over here, the white one. So it said, boss, can you please copy paste this into the formula command of a document? Do you see it? So what I do need to do is, I just need to copy paste this DDE auto into my word document. So this is a, like a 2016 machine, I, I did it like last month I guess. So I just typed formula over there and I just typed some random things. Then right click, toggle the field codes and just copy paste whatever you took it from there. Uh, and this machine is not like, a, th this one is not a cracked Microsoft Office, it was fully updated. Microsoft was unable to patch it because it is a major component for them. But still they made some uh, 
things like uh, okay enable editing kind of like enable content they have did it like uh, like uh, six or seven days back i guess so once you get a metapreter session it means like uh, we have total control on the company Oh, we'll be doing this in the demo. Just showing you guys like how to do it in Microsoft Word because I'll be showing it in Microsoft Excel. Guys, you all use uh, VMware, right? Anyone who doesn't know what is VMware? It's okay, even I, I never knew what is a VMware. So the target machine will be a Windows 7 machine and the attacker's machine will be Kali Linux. Just give it a little time, like it's going to take two or three seconds. What is the default password for Kali? Root. Password. Root. All right then. So I'll be using fat rat. I'll be leaving all the links like uh, where to download all these tools. These are all like open source and I'll be leaving all the official links. So at the end of my PPT so you guys can download it. And I'll also leave the uh, installation links as well. So here I'll be selecting uh, the sixth option which is like create a QD back to 1000% with P, W, N, Wines. So here yeah, I am going to create a PowerShell payload. That's what it is written over there. Like uh, create a bad file plus PowerShell FUD 100%. Oh, it's not FUD though. So. What IP should I type over here in L host? Yeah. What oh, what about like if I'm going to do it in the van? What IP address should I type? Sorry? What IP address should I type guys? If I'm going to do it in the van? Public IP. Exactly, public IP address. But what if the public IP address is going to be a dynamic one? I already told you this. Okay, if the IP address is going to be dynamic, what will we, we be using? DDNS, the noip.com. So we'll be having something like vela.hop.org, something like that. So you'll have to type it over here. That's it. Simple guys, don't get confused. So I just gave it a default port number like 6708. I'll name it as Conclave 2. So I'll use a payload handler as Windows Metapreta Reverse underscore HTTPS. So it's creating a payload. So like now I'm going to fire up Kali Linux. Here, like uh, already the payload has been created and it's been saved in the output folder, which will be under the fat right over here. Conclave2.bat, but I'm going to rename it as PS1. Okay, 
Okay, Kali is ready now. All right. Guys, what is this command mean? Which I am typing over here. Can anyone see it? Starting a service of application services of operating system. Okay, I'm just going to launch a simple web server over here. So I'll just copy this file, put it in the web, www, html. I'll just put it over here. Okay, now we'll write. Okay, I'm just setting up a listener, guys. Okay, I need a connection. Like, uh, once the payload is being executed on that particular victim's machine, I need a connection over here and perform tasks like downloading the like, passwords, etc. So, obviously, that's what I'm doing over here. The first command would be like use exploit multi handler, and later on, over here, you guys should have. Okay, it's not showing over here. Okay, then comes like set payload, Windows, interpreter. And yours underscore <coughs> HTTPS. Okay, no, that's great. I just forgot like what was the port number I said? Six seven zero eight. Great. <coughs> what will be the hello so here? Payload we gave our public IP or the DDNS. What about the handler? Which one will we give? Take a guess. Okay. Obviously, like uh, if you are going to use a DDNS, there will be a DDS, DDNS client which will be running at the behind. Okay. So you won't give any DDNS IP or a public IP over here because it won't be able to bind with it. The handler won't be able to bind with it. Instead, what we do is we'll be giving our internal IP. So from there, it will be forwarded over here. This is like simple networking things which you need to know beforehand, before going into a LAN kind of thing. Because people, people are like happy when it comes to the LAN kind of thing. Within the virtual network, it's like very easy. But when it comes outside, that's like totally different. And make sure you don't use Geo. It never worked for me, so that's the reason. Okay, this will be the Payload over here. So now I go to my Windows machine. I have all. You just have to simply copy paste it above, guys, over here. That particular command which I showed earlier. So here, like I'm just going to change the name as conclave two ph one, and I just want to verify the IP address. Okay, the IP address is there. Control S. Close it. <coughs> so click update. It should ask yes or no. Okay, are you guys able to see? What does it show? It wants to start the application command.exe. Okay, so if you see this particular kind of thing, please stay away from the document. Here you can see the metapeta session getting opened. 
and then to list the sessions you can give the command like minus l sessions minus l so it will show you like uh, how many sessions are there okay what if i give this document and uh, okay i just gave this document to two or three people like will i get but i said like only one handler will i get multiple sessions guy right? yes no yes Yes, you will be getting multiple sessions. Like you, there will be like another session, like two, three, four, from different IP addresses. So we are trying to interact with the session. So I'm just like going to take a webcam and just to snap. I'm just trying to take a webcam pic. Okay, here I am. Standing over here. Yeah. All right. Also, you can take like screenshot and there are lots of things you can do from here. Here you can see the screenshot like of that particular computer. And post exploitation is a long topic, like but still like you can type help and look at few commands over here, like recording the mic, the cam chat and gate system. Gate system is like elevating your privileges, elevating key scan, key loggers. Still like uh, the you can go find under like Metasploit framework and uh, post, uh, no modules, post. Somewhere over there, there are lots of other commands like uh, getting passwords from Google to Chrome and enumerating the local drives. What is enumerating the local drives, guys? Okay. Uh, you have a computer, obviously, like you guys will be having C, D, H, uh, lots of drives, right? Each are 100, 100 GB. So that is what I said, like enumerating local drives. And you can also search for like, a, you can grep command it and you can search for a specific file name, for example, passwords. So these are all things like you can do. So almost like I can use that computer as a, my computer. Anything else, guys? Sir, uh, sir uh, as CMD, the was done in normal mode. So say if I want to get access of any file that is stored in system 32, since that requires administrative yeah, you won't be able to access any other file so that is the reason we try to invoke uh, invoke powershell through cmd so that is the only file we will be able to do but through cmd you can initiate any other file like we did for the excel tip so if i want to jack cook hijack uh, cookie like steal the cookie mm -hmm. since they are stored in like uh, folder which requires administration you won't be able to steal that right yes PowerShell also like has two modes, like one is with admin access Exactly, account. yeah. One is like uh, there will be set execution policy to be restricted and then uh, unrestricted and another one will be like medium or something like that. Okay, here like, uh, okay, it, it all depends upon the PowerShell and your payload. Okay, if you are going to have a really good payload, like even if it is in the restricted mode, you can run it. But uh, now, now this computer is set to unrestricted mode. Because this is a raw payload, even if I set it in the restricted mode, I don't think so, it's going to run. So that's the reason, the reason why I used the fat rat was I'm not sure like why the MSF NM payload didn't run on the victim's computer. I tried a lot, so I thought like, leave. Anything else? No one understood anything? Understood? No? Yes? Okay, any doubts? Yeah, it's okay, you can ask, like, I, I'm happy to repeat it again, even from the first. Sir, many, like, websites say they ask us to upload our documents or anything. Mm -hmm. So, say if we upload a doc that contains this 
No, no, it won't work. They have their own solution. Yes, it won't work. Usually, what, what, what uh, I'm not sure like uh, how many enemies I have in Facebook, but what they do is uh, they try to send me all this macro DDE. They won't send it to me. Instead, they send it to my wife. Okay. So what I said to my wife was, okay, I bought a uh, like a Zoho the subscription itself for year. So I told her, whatever the document comes, open it to Zoho. You don't have to download it, never download it. Nothing else. So that, that's how I, I safeguard myself. Okay, does macros work for Mac? So Mac also supports some office tools. So yeah, that's what I'm asking. Does macros work for format? It, can we exploit Mac? Yeah, we can even exploit Mac, that is 2011 Stack Overflow. So using that, we will be able to exploit Mac as well. Okay, is Mac secure or Windows secure? Linux. Linux. Who, who said Linux? Linux is secure, who said? <laughs> okay, the reason is, okay, I, I made a payload for my Mac as well as my Linux machine. At least uh, the good thing is the Windows has something like uh, some stupid antiviruses, at least which tell us that we are protected. Okay, but the thing is uh, when I ran on my Mac, I have I have like a top protection, like premium protection for all my computers in my office and my home. I, I keep I try to keep my family members as well safe. So after I ran it, it didn't direct it. Then what I did was, I immediately uploaded to virus portal, so the files will be shared among the antivirus companies. But till now, it's been almost like 20 days, it is not still not directed. If anyone wants a sample, I can give it. You can try it on your Mac as well as your Linux machines. And please don't think like any machine, it's not like, uh, everyone, everyone thinks like, uh, okay, since I'm using a Mac or Linux, I'm safe. No, it's not like that. Nothing's safe. What are the files you were talking about? Uh, I used a shell file, a search script file. So, so you said that you shared it with the companies and they are not able to det detect anything? Yeah, I shared it with virustotal.com. Have you heard about it? Yes, sir. But sir, what are the files you know? Shell script. No, I just uploaded them my raw payload also. Not the raw payload, encrypted payload. Anything else you want to ask? Yeah, you can use encoders as well, and uh, a very good tool is Shelter. Shelter is very good. Uh, I use a licensed version for Shelter. Shelter is good. The mail framework is good. But it, it all depends like how you use it. Okay? If, if you are going to like uh, watch YouTube videos and if you are going to try it, obviously it won't work. Okay? Uh, and uh, most likely you need to bypass, first thing will be like signatures. Signatures is easy to evade. If you evade the signatures, first thing, done. The second thing is application request. Because what happens nowadays, like uh, when it comes to not and other antivirus, uh, if I have a file which will not be detected by any antivirus, but once I click on it, what it will, it will pop up a warning, boss, you are the only person in this planet who is going to use this file. Are you sure you want to execute it? So what you will do? No way I am going to execute it. Okay, that, that sounds right, right? So you need to do the application while listing over there. So how do we put payload in APK file? Uh, use MSF Venom, FatRat, or there is another thing like Backdoor Factory, where you can inject a payload into an APK. But please don't try Facebook APKs or Instagram APKs, it won't work. So Google automatically blocks it actually? Yeah, obviously. Uh, Okay, Google is kind of like, a, they, they already have their own blue team. Blue team is like people who test their softwares to end-to-end -end level. But still, it is possible to get a FUD malware for Android as well. But I, I, I am not a big fan of Android, so I, I never tested about it. Okay. All right. Androids, I haven't tested it much. It's, it's been long. Because uh, as of now, like I'm working on my malware analysis and everything. Learning. Anything else, guys? Anything else like you want to know about forensics or anything else? Any topic? Any doubts?
That's it. Okay, are we clear with the port forwarding and van thing? Because obviously you will be having all these uh, the PPT, so you guys can go home and work on it. If you have any doubts, you can contact me anytime. But please don't call me in the morning because I won't be awake. Okay, piece of advice guys, this is for you all. How many of you over here use a paid antivirus? Paid. Paid, not cracked, not stolen keys. What, what is antivirus? No, what antivirus? Not a. Not How many of them do not use antivirus? Why? Because they are shit. They are shit. Seriously, dude. Okay, so like, you mean to say you can safeguard yourself? Okay, do you visit Pirate Bay? Yes, sir. Do you visit? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, the uh, adult websites. Okay, if you are if you are using Norton on your computers, if you use certain websites, even the block uh, pop-ups, what it will say is it will say the file has been deleted. Have you heard about uh, it deleted a file known as Paula Minor dot js? It's a JavaScript file. So without the antivirus, uh, it's not a wise idea. It's like leaving your home open without a lock. So do the same thing. But sir, sometimes we use Sky Torrents and that is without JavaScript. Sorry? Sorry? So sometimes we use Sky Torrents and that is without JavaScript. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we can disable JavaScript also. Yeah, you can do it, but you do it for the bank websites. Try to use no script and go to your bank website. You won't be able to log in. So certain sites, they need JavaScript to identify yourself. Whether it is you who is accessing the account. They use Silverlight and JavaScript to identify you. Oh, what about the passwords? How many of them keep same passwords? I keep same passwords, yes. Okay. Try, try to keep different passwords, change them randomly each 30 days. The reason behind this, okay, for example, like you are using a website, uh, the website got compromised and your password was like 12345. And Unfortunately, the website didn't encrypt that particular information. Obviously, then everyone will try one, two, three, four, five on your bank logins and everywhere. Okay, so that's the reason on your social media profiles. Okay, so you need to be aware about it. Uh, also, use LastPass to store your passwords and never make a check mark on remember password because we will be able to, as a forensic examiner, I'll be able to retrieve your password from your memory itself. So that's something you need to know, but never store your passwords with Google, but still they know. Okay, use VeraCrypt to encrypt sensitive information, like you, whatever, whichever information you feel sensitive, please encrypt it, or some ransomware will encrypt it for you. Okay, okay. The last thing, there is no 100% security, it's not 100% anonymity. So don't think like, okay, I'm 100% invisible, I have Tor. I have proxies, right? And nearly 75% of the proxies and VPNs are owned by governments. Okay? So don't think like, okay, I am like 100% secure, I use to. Okay. Last but not least, what is it? Okay, that's a, that's a good one, I am sorry. What is it? Last but not least, is common sense. Always read, like, whenever you get a warning, try to read, try to spend few seconds, read the warning, what exactly? Okay, if you see that, obviously you are, you should be safe. Sir, can we trust uh, such password words like last pass? Sorry? Sir, you suggested last pass. Yes, we can download last pass also passwords. There is a module in Metasploit. Can we trust these kind of digital words? Password. Like, how do you trust you asking me? So, sir, you, you said you, we, we should keep our passwords in such applications. Mm -hmm. So can we trust? Trust these applications. Last okay, like I said, there is no like hundred percent security. If you 
you have to get hacked, obviously you'll get hacked. Okay, thank you. And let's make a responsible and safe cyberhood. Heed to advices of your fellow men. Respect everyone. Spread love within the community. Okay, don't do all the show off stuffs after knowing everything. Okay, all right, guys. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot.